And our guest today, we have a super awesome uh, couple with us. And uh, we'll let, 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 I'll let you introduce yourselves. Tony uh, Polanco and Madeline Vasquez Polanco. Super awesome. It's dope. To, you guys are going to have to talk as loud as me, which is probably hard, but because I'm like too loud. But um, anyway, <laughs> this is going to be really cool. Um, and actually, hold on, we, we have other people on the podcast. Oh, yeah, you know, I was just thinking, you read my mind. Right? We didn't we introduce have, everybody. Oh, we have uh, Catalea Polanco here. Catalea, say hi, Catalea. Say hi. Say hi, I'm Catalea. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have. Um, we have Anthony Cyrus Polanco Jr. Anthony. He goes by the Cyrus. Big boss. The man that's in charge here. Yes, yeah, yeah. he's a six person. He's partner. a laid back person. <laughs> we'll probably mostly be talking with the, the managers of the company. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, me? Yeah. I'm going to get lollipops on demand. Yes. <laughs> We're yeah. glad to be here. We're glad to be here. We're um, <laughs> taking the time I to really I explore San Antonio because we, uh, we oh. go places, but. We gotta be also home based, so we exploring San Antonio now. We give the attention to San Antonio that that needs to be given. So yeah, that's why we do the music now. Yeah. And then we have some new episodes coming out on our yeah. travel channel. Yeah. Yeah. We got the number one itinerary Woo. season two coming out. Oh next week. man. So hey, that's gonna be that? taking people to Cuba. Oh. Taking people to. Are you taking us to Cuba? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is that a YouTube? You have a YouTube channel? Yeah, we yeah, have. I gotta check that out. Okay. Yes. I need to subscribe to today. You said YouTube, and you said you have YouTube. Well, listen, I gotta check that out. Sometimes I don't understand things correctly. You gotta yeah. give them Mr. Composition is also in the building somewhere. Woo! But, um, Mr. Composition! Woo! Woo! So that's really cool. Let's start there with the travel because that's something that we like to. That fits perfectly into hashtag goal. If you guys don't know, which we haven't given you that much. Oh, wait. I'm sure you, you and Daniel yeah. talked about our podcast a little bit. And we're talking about at one of the events. Yes. Um, Within the United States, and went back to Panama a couple times, and then I'm gonna go ahead and pass the mic to him, Mr. Tony. Come on, yeah. You good? I don't know. Um, yeah, same way. Um, I uh, was raised in South Central LA, finish all this shit in LA, and then um, you know my, my mom is from Louisiana, Shreveport. Oh, shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, me too. And, uh, <laughs> oh, and then my dad is from um, um, Panama, so as well, Panama City, Panama. So we um, kind of grew up in a like, kind of diverse community of uh, Central LA, just like Jamaicans, Caribbeans, um, and like Central Americans. So yeah, it started in South Central LA basically. I was doing like music at like elementary, doing poetry. I remember I like never missed a day of school like. So they got me like a limo when I graduated. <laughs> and we went to go out eating. I was like, this place is that. Oh, she said real story. Oh, real story. Okay. <laughs> like you first traveled like by yourself the first time. Well, 
first travel, oh my gosh, by myself as a kid, to Panama, family, and then I just kept traveling between Panama and the United States, and then with the United States, I had family like all over, like North Dakota, New York, um, Louisiana, Shreveport, Dallas, Texas, Houston, Texas, and, and so like as I kind of like had to go when I was younger, like my dad got deported back to what I want to see. And so like in order to see him, I had to travel. So it became something like I feel like a necessity, like part of my lifestyle. Yeah. In order to like see you know, see family. So I traveled to Panama, and then I started studying in other places. I studied in Spain and Valladolid and just explored all around Spain when I was in college. And I just been traveling since went to Santo Domingo. I released my first book out there in Santo Domingo. Wow. Yeah, it's the name of the book. Verses from the Diaspora. It's, it's a poetry original piece. It's, it's like poetry in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. And so, like. Did you read it in English? Yeah. Yes. But the whole connection oh, is right here. Yeah, the whole connection is verses yeah. from the diaspora, like the blackness within the Americas and the West Hemisphere. Oh, this is really cool. Yeah, to show you, like, my journey along the way, you know, from my viewpoint. That's cool. It's in Spanish. And partially in English. In English. Yeah. Dang, this is super cool. Yeah, I got, I released that in. Uh, so you don't speak Spanish? You speak Portuguese? I speak Spanish and Portuguese. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're very similar. Okay. Dang, that's super cool. Okay, so one of the biggest things that I see with people like our age who want to travel is like, they would say, I don't have the money. So mm -hmm. y'all going to trips, what's your mindset financially? I'm like, what advice would you give people who want to travel? Um. We basically know we have a set goal, mm -hmm. so we, we uh, get a metric to kind of like know what's the amount it's gonna take. Mm -hmm. And like me, I'm, I'm always like checking prices. And like that's like a, a daily thing for me. Yeah. So was, I'm always up to date to like what prices are to which countries, out of which areas, like which cities. And I keep myself updated. Mm -hmm. and Just regular like uh, Delta website, like kayak, what do you everything, mean? Yeah, okay. everything. Like I, I'm to the point where it's like I just open my email and my emails are just overloaded with like travel updates. Okay. To the point where like I just go to my email and I'll get like the latest update um, on the price I'm checking on where I'm going, and I just got different places that I just check. It's like it's like the newspaper. You know how some people wake up and do newspaper more? Yeah. Well, when I get up, I go and check flights. And, see you know what's going on like right there so that's that's how i go about doing it that's one of the ways i go about doing it mm -hmm. and when you budget wise basically have a set goal amount you know and when exactly you need to get go check and don't wait till the last minute like we do like six months ahead internationally mm -hmm. um, and we do six months ahead it gives you time to really be practical on the budget and you can save and make sure you have at least a sufficient amount um, when you go out there so that's one of the ways. I know um, Madeline has so many different ways too. How we can like save and just daily living. Um, yeah, we pretty much um, when we do travel, um, we try to get a place where they have where you can cook, and we save money like that because I just cook there. So if we like, for example, in um, Barbados, mm -hmm. um, we just went to the the market. We that's went to um, the market and we just purchased like we had a budget. Let's just say you know. Hundred dollars um, for food for that whole week. Mm -hmm. I purchased, um, I pr we purchased that, and then we like lit. I don't know how I did this, y'all, mm -hmm. but um, <laughs> we literally had like the meal for for every day, and we thought we did kind of save some money for like going out to eat or having a few drinks here and there because their food is really good. Yeah. But um, we saved a lot of money by um, buying our food and cooking ourselves and going yeah. to the fish market or um, trying out different things. Um, but that's another way, and then we pretty much just, um, we have a budget of like how much we're going to spend for the food, for like, you know, visiting places and um, transportation, whether it's Uber, taxi, buses, whatever, you know, we budget out for that. And um, we just pretty much plan ahead of what we're gonna do so that way we know what we, we need to expect. And we have emergency in case, you know, for the kids or whatnot, because they always come with us wherever we go. So we have to have like, you know, extra snacks and things that um, we have to pack in the plane, on the plane to be able to take to have there if we can't get it there, you know. But yeah, we pretty much just, it's all about uh, packing um, efficiently and um, packing enough for the trip, just yeah. enough for the trip. and. And money-wise, you know, we just pretty much don't really spend a, a lot of money. Uh, we wait um, to see where we're going so that we know what we're going to spend there. Yeah. 
So it's just pretty much um, budgeting. That's called adulting, guys. Yeah. <laughs> budgeting, yeah, it's, it's budgeting. So is that like a major part of the YouTube channel? Like you really go, you try to help, I mean, what, what do you focus on when you do the YouTube channel? Is it the financial aspect or you just help people see the city? Help people see the, the city. Um, mm -hmm. The financial part is just part of it, you know? Yeah. The financial part is just part of it because you have to have, be financially, um, like your mindset has to be financially stable in order to be able to plan these trips. Because people are like, oh, well, it costs so much money, you know? Yeah. How, how do you do it? Yeah, we have you have money to go out every so often. And yeah. Yeah. Go to restaurants and go out drinking and go to bars and it's like, yeah. I mean, I, I, I just, I'd rather go to bars in the country. Like, yeah. I'd yeah. go to bars, but let's do it on a different level. Let's do it big. Let's, yeah. And I think it's an excuse that people make because, like, as I've gotten older, I've seen, like, it's really not that hard. I mean, I've been a flight attendant, so I've got to see so, the world. Yeah. yeah. That's I got to pay to do it. Yeah. Not that much, though. That's my old airline. I'm not going to name drop them. I'm not going to name drop them. They're in heat right now. So, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Then, uh, check out. Uh, Shade or whatever because they're just on there. But, anyways, um, yeah. Um, I think it's people use it as an excuse, like, I don't have enough money, but you're right. If you, like, stop going to Pop Bell, stop doing happy hour, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's Say you're crazy, you can't go out, and, like, you could be in Barbados. No, you're wrong. Right. We, we don't, we, we just, we, we don't ever go out. We just pick and choose the yeah. right times when yeah. to go out. Yeah. We're not, when we're not focusing on our goals, like, we have a set period where we're not traveling, and, you know, we, we try to enjoy ourselves the best way we can mm -hmm. in a very, uh, Responsible way, knowing that we're gonna we're gonna travel again. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's just a cycle. We yeah, like yeah, and I really feel like people are always just like they, most of the time when they're like, I need more money, or something like that. It's like, for well, what? You're just trying to go get some shade back. Too much <laughs> to ask my my wife, like, it's yeah. a commitment for me to buy shoes, and I'm like, you need some shoes. I'm like. I had to be like, hey, you like, we really like, I just, I want to travel, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, too, I'm, I'm like the only girl who be like, I just wear these shoes to the, what's the color of my actual shoe top? The soft, like, you know, oh, you have to get a few pairs. Yeah, and my friend was like, oh, absolutely not. You need to retire this, right? Yeah, yeah. See, I need to get retired. I'm the same way, too. I'm like, what do I want to do? You know, like, it's cool. Like, I mean, I, I want to have, you know, these days, more and more, I'm getting into like, all right, maybe I should like buy outfits for shows and stuff like right. that. Maybe kind of, but I mean, I still got a whole bunch of African people. Hey, where? Well. So it's like yeah. that's cool. Nobody yeah. has that. If you wanted to buy this, you have to spend like three hundred dollars. So someone's gonna have to ship it over here for you or something yeah. like that. So, mm -hmm. so, but I mean, but I do think more about that. But yeah, I, I know Mr. Compositions over here, and, and last year was like a like, <laughs> like a class on how to travel minimally. We did the, yeah, the, uh, cool. the the flights, a lot of the flights, that's probably the area where we didn't get as cheap as we could have gotten, but still we didn't spend that much money. The flights weren't that much money, but definitely when it comes to buses, like, like yeah. you can see, especially, oh, especially in Texas, there's so much you can see. You can get out to New Orleans for how much? New Orleans? Eight bucks. Eight bucks. Eight bucks. Eight bucks. Eight bucks. Right? Yeah. New Orleans. Mm -hmm. yeah. To go out there, get an Airbnb for a couple of days, you can get to Austin, yeah, so Dallas. Dallas. You can get all over the place oh, on the bus. Yeah. So. Tony said he got Creole on his house. My mom gumbo is on a whole other level. You get a chair for some composition, you should yeah. get in this. Might as well as this Crater Game special. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's right there. Oh. Right. AKA the fifth wheel. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, might as well, you got some stuff. If this is going to be a travel episode, uh, yeah. I know. I mean, we're going to do some travels. Some other things, too, is, mm -hmm. you know, travel is one that I mentioned, you know, it's multi-layers. So. Let's hear about your book a little bit. What was your book about? Yeah, so um, the book is about MVP travel. So what it is is that when we travel, and this is, like, pretty much experiences, when we travel, we as, you know, having little ones, toddlers, and an infant, um, things happen. Like, they get sick, and which mm. really happens. And yeah. so I'm going to give you one ex one uh, example. When we went to Cuba, um, the my uh, three-year-old, she got me sick on the plane. Like, she just got a fever. Yeah. And um, we always, uh, well, now we always carry um, different things for them to, to be able to, to assist her with that. So with the fever, we uh, pretty much um, had elderberry. I, I do a, I did elderberry uh, for fevers, uh, for different things. High, high blood pressure, hypertension, I have it all. So um, I take, I travel with those oils and also with, um, Crystals, crystals help you too. Um, so I talk about a little bit about that in the book. Um, just give you um, some some brief sites on um, different things that you need to check when you do travel. Uh, what to check for, um, the different um, tricks that that they don't tell you about. So 
um, when you check that out, you, you'll know, you know, pretty much like what to do. And it, it's just really what it boils down to is That's what it is deal. about you, you know. Yeah. You know how you are when you travel. If you, if for me, for example, I, I'm scared of flights, mm -hmm. but we still travel. So what I do is I take things that will help me. For example, lavender, it, it soothes you, it calms you, and I and I use that um, to travel. Yeah. And for the kids, I have to have different things. Like everywhere we go, I pretty much take oil with yeah. us. Mm -hmm. And um, in the book, it has that, and just gives you more more information on like, you know, when, what to do when you're traveling, and like what airlines are pretty much better to go with, and what to look for, you know, packing is very important too. I, I used to be like a bag lady. I used to have bags, you know, with bags when I traveled. But with different flights, you, you couldn't only have a certain amount. Mm -hmm. So I got it to where all of all of our clothes, my, my clothes and the two babies' clothes, mm -hmm. they all fit in one bag for a week. That's I was like, what? Yeah, yeah so cool. I, I got down. That kind of stuff is really cool. Yeah, yeah it's important too. Yeah. I, like, I like what you said about the oils, because that's really it. Like, yeah. That's in the elderberry. Yeah, I've noticed a lot yes. of parents are using like more like Natural. medicinal, yes. like holistic type yes. stuff. That's good too. And people aren't aware of that. Like there is some country you can't go into six. So you come there coughing, mm -hmm. you're gonna be back yeah. on a flight. <laughs> or, or or they keep you. Oh yeah, they, they keep you, you yeah. like detain you yeah. in like Barbados. A, a couple was detained because one of the ladies got sick. So it's really important to to watch out for them for weather changes and things like that too. You know. Yeah. I'm, I'm lucky. I'm friends with Rihanna, so when I go to Barbados, Ooh, it's like you know. Like, you know. <laughs> 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 we love her. We're together. We're together. She got a house up there. Like, yes, yeah, 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 And then the, with the first thing you see is Rihanna posted all over. You yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, which is cool because I love Rihanna yeah. too. But she's just all over the place. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool though. You know, that makes me think about like traveling is so interesting because a lot of that was um, like when, when we and Mr. Composition were on the road. We're both like, we both have problems. You know, we don't take care of ourselves properly. So we basically just, uh, you know, subjected our bodies to whatever was going to happen. You don't need <laughs> sleep. You don't need proper nutrition. You're eating <laughs> French bread and water for the real. Like, <laughs> if you get sick, Hold the top pin. So the <laughs> yeah, you pass yeah. out outside the airport. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. But um, that makes me think. But I, I know um, we started getting better at that by the time we went to like Japan and stuff like that. And we were both like super happy. Like we got back and then we got to our car. And, like there was a bunch of water there. And just thinking about what you need, that became like a big theme towards the end, at least in my mind. Like, mm -hmm. okay, there's probably a weird way to do. I mean, a, a way to do this like in a certain kind of healthy way. Right. And lately, I've been thinking about how that plays into everything. You know. Like mm -hmm. your ability to sustain while you're doing a bunch of stuff, your energy and protect your energy mm -hmm. really depends on whether or not you're going to have a good outcome in your thing. Whether yeah. that's you as a performer or you as anything else. I know, like for, a, and it's really interesting how certain kinds of anxieties will will really cripple your ability to deliver um, the key moment that was meant for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, um, well. I think about that a lot with events because I think there's so many parts of events that are really nerve-wracking. Not because like anything's really going wrong, but just like um, just the just the the worrying about your identity being on display mm. is just a huge source of uh, you know like um, what um, anxiety in general. And you really have to be able to manage that. And I'm sure you guys are managing, and that, that's such an entrepreneurial artist thing. Like, if you can get that down, that patience, and really being able to like um, manage your energy um, and protect your energy in these different places. And it sounds it, when you were talking about, you know, you keeping the family together and all the things that you're doing. That mm -hmm. book sounds super interesting. So I want to check it out. Mm -hmm. But it made me think about that, like all the things that are necessary for us to enjoy this high level thing when there's so many potential causes mm -hmm. for you know mental and physical health issues. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm wondering, are there other areas of your guys' life where that becomes like a skill, like when, when it comes to performing mm -hmm. or anything else like that? Does, does that kind of play into like, does your planning help with that? You're like, oh, yeah, do a show. it does. Yeah, like I, I like had a, like, I've always envisioned like traveling mm -hmm. and 
is something that I envision since I was young. I, I meant to tell you my first travel one, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna I'm gonna like explain with, with this kind of story. My actual first time I traveled was two years old by myself. Mm-hmm. Like, I snuck out and I was gone. <laughs> That's what I was trying to get to say. <laughs> but I was thinking I was going, and they looked for me, and I ended up going to the neighbor house. And like since then, I just I kind of knew I want to travel. So as growing up, I always knew if I had a family, which I probably will, I was going to work it into my lifestyle. And that's something, as I was young, I just kept traveling. I knew that's something that was not going to go away or stop, regardless of whether I'm married, whether I'm older, whether I started real high profile or just a career, a long lasting career, I knew it was gonna something that's gonna continue. And so over the years, like growing up, I knew travel was something I was I was gonna kinda do with my family. So I you know, I kinda like weaved it into my lifestyle. Um, like the first thing we even talked about was traveling when we first started talking. Like that was one of the very Segway. How'd you meet? Poetry. Poetry? Yeah. yeah. What is the rest of the red? <laughs> <laughs> I like you. Poetry, I mean, I mean, I like poetry. I'm, I'm, I don't consider myself a poet just simply because it's not my passion. Mm-hmm. But I, I do like to write. Um, yeah, I just I, don't like poetry. But he, he's I was on a poet. tour. I was on a tour. I was in New York at the time and I came here to Austin. Um, and she was there and like she got to see my poetry and then um, we started talking ever since. Um, that was a yeah, but that's how we met. But um, to answer their question, like, to um, answer the question, basically, performance. <laughs> yeah, we we kind of know what to expect. We know what limitations. We know we're practical about. You know, we gotta get time to rest. We gotta get time to take breaks. Yeah. Get time with to the eat. kids too. Yeah. You know, we have to like really like balance and, and communication. Now, don't get it twisted. Like sometimes we bump heads because he doesn't get enough rest, or I don't get enough rest. And yeah. so you know, you have we bump heads, but then you you think about you know in the long run, you know. Yeah. And um, you have to just keep pushing. You know, this is why we're doing this for them. So we have to stay focused and keep pushing forward. Um, but we make sure, you know, hey, stay hydrated, you know, take your vitamins, get some rest, try to sleep, you know, yeah. um, eat more foods, don't eat heavy stuff, like, like too much meat or meats, you know, try to do it light, you know, and, and snack on certain, like, nuts and, and, and stay hydrated with, uh, we do spring water, we, you know, we do spring water and, and just pretty much just take care of your health. It's really important because if you don't take care of your health, then nobody else is going to take care for you. Yeah. So um, I try to lead by example and try to like be healthy. And you know, I, I love ice cream, so I had to learn how to make like a uh, coconut ice cream because that's like my favorite. So I was like, I'm just if I love it so much, I might as well learn how to make it so that way I know it's nutritious. And yeah. So we do that, and we, you know, just pretty much we try to stay healthy. Yeah. <laughs> and I, that. I was that, just gonna say like, we got. Bobby Smith just jumped in the in the building too. So I'm like, mm-hmm. we should get. You go first. Yeah, I, was saying, I wonder if like that, both of you guys see it that transition as far as like um, packing light when you're traveling and then eating light. You know how those correlate for like that minimalistic lifestyle. It's just all like we realize more and more that when we don't eat heavy stuff and when we don't carry heavy stuff, the toll is a lot less because it's just like when you're traveling if you're carrying a bunch of extra stuff the weight starts taxing on the price you know right like whatever you're like so it's just like all right so instead of bags you know i need to go ahead and minimize down to one and then on top of that when you're eating learning how to do that as well when you're eating as far as the type of stuff like what stuff are you eating that's taxing on a heavy toll Mm-hmm. You know, due to the fact that eating life like that, I think that that's definitely something you learn you travel in life as well. Yeah, yeah that's true. true. Bobby, what about you? You're probably going to have to come a little closer for your answer so the microphone can grab you, but uh, you can probably stand next to Kyle. Oh, oh. You oh. Block the camera. Oh, you good. Um, you, you've been, you tour a lot. I know that's the comedian thing, right? You, you tour a lot. Am I wrong about that? I, I used to, not You used much. to. Now, now you don't. Yeah. But when you were, was that the same thing, protecting your energy, going from venue to venue? I'm sure that had to be crazy. How do you, how did, how did you do that? Um, as far as like, uh, I guess doing the right thing. I, I 
actually, it's interesting, we're talking a lot about physical, and I think physical is huge because that manifests on all levels, but I'm actually thinking more mentally, yeah. um, you know, like, how do you, how were you able to, like, go from venue to venue, and comedy is the, probably the most nerve-wracking, because, like, as a musician, it's not that nerve-wracking, because you've practiced, and you know that, you, you know, like, it's not going to be like, oh, maybe they'll think I'm funny, maybe they won't. It's just like, you know, I'm going to go do my stuff, right, right, yeah. you know, except for the first few times of music. But comedy seems like it's pretty nerve-wracking. I mean, at least it seems like it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is. It's, yeah. um, I mean, it's, it's good, good nervous and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, and I like that nervousness, too. It's like, I like hosting shows, too, but it's just like, it's going to be fun. I'm just going to win. Right. Yeah, but it's going to be <laughs> yeah, just a little bit of anxiousness and yeah. then, uh, just try to stay rested and Yeah. Well, on the road though it gets super hard. Like was there a way that you would travel to kind of keep to like keep your spirits up? Um I mean I guess I wasn't traveling like that. Yeah, but, okay. Uh, it's just more, you know, local stuff. I mean okay, more okay. Texas stuff. Yeah, yeah. Texas um, is big. It is. Yeah, but I guess I've never experienced like that, like that crazy. Yeah, and the road Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we didn't do. The thing is, we didn't do that many spots. It was just kind of the way that we were doing it. Like we would just kind of decide to get in the car and drive, and then also not having a lot of money. Kind of makes you do that. <laughs> <laughs> right. On that bread and water, that truck, man. That truck. I only hear more about like your art gold. I think it sounds kind art of fun. Like, what, what are you guys thinking? Of? Is coming up for artistically. Oh, I got I got the album. You got one book. Ooh, okay. I got the album coming out definitely. Um, it's gonna be my introductory album. Um, it's gonna be like just a little bit of experimental hip hop um, and just like any music, just experimenting with different sounds. You know. Mm. I, I was checking out your stuff, man, and like that kind of like made me think, dang, that's. You know, you don't have to fit like a social norm or follow a trend or, you know, you know what I mean? It's kind of do your own lane, do your own thing, be authentic. And like, that's, so that, that's the movement right there, just authentic. That's why I say hood nerd, because like, yeah. I'm from the hood, but I'm a nerd. I'm like, I'm not going to tell you I'm out there, you know. So you bang, you do capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hood nerd, like, I'm in the hood, but instead of banging, I'm, like, I'm blood. <laughs> Instead of the hood, instead of banging, I'm in the house calculating. Like I'm doing the numbers. I'm making. You're doing the numbers with the guns and stuff. <laughs> nah, I, mean, I, was, I was on the books. Nah, I was on the books. So I got numbers on the spreadsheet. Oh yeah, we got so yeah, we got the e-books out. Like my wife, she got one. I had one just came out. It's like the God to Cuba. Like, cause out there it's like, you can't just be like, oh, okay, I'm gonna get a Wi-Fi and look, nah, you ain't about to get a Wi-Fi <laughs> <laughs> you, you about to be a Wi-Fi, it's about to be like 200 people around you getting on that same Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> so out there it was just like, learn how to navigate, and that's what I talk about in the book. I talk about where to go, how to navigate out there, what to look for. The easiest way because you cannot use no American debit card in out there. No, we have you're out. Cash. You can't. Yeah, you can't even yeah. use. American you probably don't want to use here. No, no. 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 You, can't. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make sure you put your phone on uh, airplane mode. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, airplane mode. I had it on Roman as soon as we like got saved down in, like the plane. I just put it on Roman. Yeah, yeah. So it didn't get expensive in Cuba because they have their own little system, so they charge outrageous, like I think a dollar. Or two a minute. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah. the book is like it's a guy. It tells you how to understand the policy of going out there, the proper way to go out there. Some people just go to Mexico and go or Canada, but it's you don't have to do all that. You can just fly to the United States. But you just gotta go for the right way. You gotta do some forms, fill them out, and then you kind of like kind of know where you're gonna go because you try to wing it. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> It's old fashioned out there, like they use, they use paper when you go on in to check in and stuff. Mm -hmm. They use paper and pen and. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. So oh, it's, it's, it's not as modernized, and you can tell the cars, the customs, the people, the houses, the sh even the infrastructure. Yeah. But the people are very, very mm -hmm. common and very genuine. You know, you can feel it. You can feel, you can feel it's deep. Yeah, it's really deep. It's very spiritual, very spiritual. We have, we have, um, like I said, um, when 
when y'all watch the YouTube channel, when we have our episode that's coming up, we're gonna um, be doing some herbalist stuff. Like I, I did like a herbal, um, African herbal um, soap making, like with actual plants. Yeah, so that's gonna be on one of the episodes. Yeah, that's, that was very, yeah. yeah. That's all the stuff I'm interested in. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, so the book describes all of that because um, we had to go, we basically went from Nirvana and then we took the bus for like 15, 16 hours With the kids. to San Diego de Cuba. Cool. Mm -hmm. And like it was a cultural conference I was participating. Oh, nice. So we got we had to like learn to navigate it ourselves and understand certain things. Like like out there they got motorcycle taxis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They have that in Nigeria too. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. We sit on the back of the motorcycle. Yeah. yeah. That was interesting. I was yeah. like, what if this guy decides to Go off. <laughs> yeah. I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> they think I have people for real. I don't know this guy. He might know. I don't have any money, but he might think I have money. Nah, we were <laughs> one of those old school yeah. classic yeah. ones. Right? Yeah. So was, pretty much all the countries that we go to, he's like presenting, um, you know, about the African diaspora. That's cool. How do you, how do they figure, find out about you? Or you, you I just submit them? proposals. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. And, and, I, I, I found a way to like bridge the culture like for instance Cuba is like black culture like real deep black African culture so they, they respect that like you know Afrocentric and people when they know when they you know where they come from they respect that because Cuba is a very conscious and socially aware so out there it's like it's like they the African religion and culture is still rooted in their whole lifestyle yeah and so like I kind of related to that in my uh, presentation about like Afro-Cuban poetry, it's like how it related back to like slavery and the different ways slavery happened across the Americas, and then you know I just I kind of relate everything back, you know, to a perspective of African basically the African history. I relate that all back because it's like it may be spread out, but it has one central central root that's behind it. And so, yeah, that was that's super cool. I'd love to. Do you ever get to record those? those yeah, those yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna. I gotta them. check out all you guys' YouTube stuff, man. Yeah. That's cool. Yes, they too. We're gonna have season two, so you get some time to get caught up. Season one, season one. We're in like Jamaica. We're in the Barbados. We're in like Bahamas. We're in like Florida. We're in LA. We're in Panama. Panama. Yeah. That's real. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah, we did a music video in Panama. Mm -hmm. um, Come my reason, but we did like. Our area where we grew up, especially in my life, and then like one of the best spots in Panama, Panama Viejo, is like the place where pirates used to come and like hide gold with, mm -hmm. and take all kinds of stolen goods. So you got their stigma. Yeah. yeah we're looking good, good. Good. <laughs> we had the kids. <laughs> Find me out on Instagram. That's at Passport Polanco because I'm P A S S P O R T Polanco P O L A N C O. We also find the number one itinerary. The actual hashtag one itinerary I T I N E R A R Y. You know we're on Facebook as well. And check out Tony Top's travel mom travel consultation like episodes. He gets travel tips. <laughs> All right. You, we find you through him, or you got your own? Oh um, yeah, well, mine's is um, at MVP at, at Naturally You by MVP on Instagram, and um, on Facebook is Madeline Vasquez Polanco. And also, I have a little side um, one for like natural holistic stuff, and that one is called Naturally You. Um, so you can find me on Facebook, and Twitter, Madeline Vasquez Polanco. <laughs> yes, no Nice. Well, <laughs> Thank you guys. since you said a couple stuff on the podcast, where, where, where can they find you? Uh, B Smitty Comedy. Boom. Uh, Instagram, Twitter. Boom. Oh, B Smitty Comedy. Or oh, Smitty Comedy. 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 Drop your deeds. Oh, man. In mom's face. <laughs> uh, you can find me at dabshow.com <laughs> and uh, Graffiti with my son. That's so in. And yeah, they can go to Midnight Garden. And uh, two singles dropping on Project 4 music next week. It's going to be everywhere. It's 
Spotify tunes. There was a trailer that put out. Yes. Who shot that? Oh, that was five o'clock production. Oh, that's me. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's me though. Yeah, that's you. Five project forward to there. Make sure y'all check out the trailer. Dig it in the midnight bar. 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 Dope, dope. Um, all right, Danny, where, where, where can they find you? At my house. I'm about to go home to my house. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even think. Every time I can't spell my yeah, name, Yeah, this is a recurring thing on the podcast. I have a college degree, spelled, but I mean, her own it's D-A-N-N-Y-B-I-C. At Danny Nick, everywhere. That's a first. Yes. That's for y'all. I can go, guys. That's Leo season. Yeah. Oh, yes, my birthday is on August 17th. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. Happy early 21. Anyways, so, yeah. Facebook, Vick on everything else, and Kenyo, you? At Kenyo HQ on everything. LinkedIn, Snapchat. Well, not on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> LinkedIn is just regular Kenyo, but uh, Snapchat. Everything with a handle is Kenyo HQ. And then go yeah. to Kenyo.org. It's my website. Poetry, music, art. And the hashtag goals you can find at hashtag goals XO on Instagram and hashtag goals on Facebook. And then your favorite podcast app, Ike, while you're listening to it, however you are now. So just keep doing it that way. <laughs> and, uh, thank you so much, you guys, for listening. Thank you guys for. Thank you guys for having me. And shout out to Daptro Creations for the video ones. This is also thank a video. You. If you're listening to the audio, check out the video um, wherever it is at. I don't know. But definitely, if you go to hashtag goals Facebook page, you'll be able to find the video there, I'm sure. Alright, peace. Hey, peace. Thank you. I don't know why I just did a T-Sign. Oh, you said cheese, say cheese, girl. Say cheese, cheese. Say cheese. Oh, this is dope. It recorded. What's your T-shirt brand name? That was what happened in the internet. He didn't say that. He did. I don't remember verbatim. What's the name of your clothes on? We don't know. It's not Ralph, though. All right, uh, so we're back here, you guys. This is a hashtag goals podcast, but we're live at the Creator Games 2019 Creator Games. Um, we got a Tasia and Mr. Composition. Hello. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having us. Yes, um, thank you guys for coming back. It's definitely been long. Um, I can't imagine. Um, if, if Danielle, if you had been at HWC um, in 2018, you just would have done it. You wouldn't have been Because if you think this is stressful and long, you should have seen Mr. Composition. This dude was so pissed off. Because we did, <laughs> did we do two days or three days? We just did two the days. The first, the, the 2018, yeah. we did two days. We did two days. He was so pissed off the second day. That's why you guys are kind of liking me. He, because uh, if you go back, it was so funny. Like you should have seen his face. And I was like, because I was like, all right, we're still gonna do this. He was like, do we really need to? And I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you're like, you're not, like, you're going to and be like, oh, we, you know, we got wrapped up. We're gonna do it. And I'm just like, why are you trying to add extra stuff? Like, people are trying to like me and Kevin. Like, we try to wind down. We're just like, our is like to leave, and you're just like, let's do this. Like, no, it's canceled. Like, it's over. Kevin, when he put his camera away, it was oh, yeah. over. <laughs> Two days doing a two day event is almost super weird, but I like it. Um, anyway, so let's talk. Atasia, you performed yesterday, it was dope. Um, you seem like you have more songs than I've, I've um, uh, than, than, than you just keep coming out with new songs. Yeah, it's super sure. dope. Um, and it's very cool. How long have you been performing? When was your first performance? Honestly, the first performance was with y'all. Oh! Uh, I performed the first time for okay. the awards. Yeah. That was my first time ever performing. Yeah. And I only did that one song. But yeah. I mean, no, I did two songs. Yeah. That time. yeah. And so um, that was me just like getting into my vibe. I was so much in denial that I was like, I was a songwriter. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm just a songwriter. I'm not a singer. I'm not a performer. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't do that shit. Yeah. Can I press on the podcast? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was like um, I was so in denial and you know everybody just 
kept pushing me to perform. They were mm -hmm. like, you're so good. Like, why yeah. don't you just do this? And so I'm just so grateful that y'all give me the opportunities mm -hmm. when they come up because it's like I'm getting this practice and I'm just getting better and better each time. So. Mm -hmm. You, you really are, like, like in a very real, very fast way, and I think that's very cool that you get to, like, I don't know, the way that you're doing it. I mean, you were good right away, so that's yeah. pretty cool. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So in case you can see me in real life, guys. Yeah, I There's a difference. That's what, like, I, uh, these are actually two people that we pull from the most. It's interesting to have you on the podcast because it's always either, like, yeah. it's a conversation with Tasia. I don't even yeah. know I can book one of those people, but, like, Tasia can really sing, and Kevin can really perform, and he's a good rapper. He's good everything. It's true. So, like, yeah, it's hard as far to find as people to like book who are yeah. like, really, really good. Like, like that, that I would want to listen to. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I would go to the show. Like, and that's how I met Kevin. You know, like I heard him at a show that I was just at, and I was like, oh, this he was the only person that night that I would actually go listen to their music mm -hmm. live. And then the first the first time we performed and every single time since then it is the same thing. I'm like, oh okay, I would actually do this live, I'd listen to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the funny thing is I don't actually really listen to lyrics, so like I haven't super gotten into your <laughs> like, lyrics. Now I have now, the Kevin, you know song. It's yeah. been in my head for two days. Hey. Not about bad income yesterday, but I, that song is like in my head all the time. Yeah. I look at my mom listened to it, she liked it too. Oh, she, yeah. She's like a big fan of Tasia. She loves me. Because like she's Tasia's like my little sister. Basically, like she's my little sister. She's so. my mom. Yeah, yeah, I'm her mom. So. Not you, you're my sister. Yeah, your mom is my mom. I'm your mom too. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, but um, Mr. Com now Mr. Composition songs are like in my head. I realize that like I like rap them along. Cause, I mean, obviously, I've heard all your songs live oh, yeah. like <laughs> a ridiculous number of times. I was in the shower, not like not in a weird way. Okay, like what? Ah. Uh, Like actors and musicians, if you look at like 
their press days or like other stuff that they yeah, like being on friends. set for like a TV show or a movie sucks. See, and shit like that, that's fun to me because I'm yeah. like, I'm I'm here, like I'm in the present moment, yeah. like doing this for myself yeah, because yeah. I want to, because yeah. I like it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's something that I want to do. I don't mind being on a yes. set for however long. Yeah. I mean, as long as I'm getting the opportunity to do it. Yeah. yeah. That's my thing. And if I have the time, that's another thing. Yeah. yeah. And like, you know, like a 12 hour day at your regular nine to five and 12 hour day doing like something you like is totally different. Exactly. You can be in a studio for 12 hours, you can be editing for 12 hours and it goes by, you don't even know that you're editing. Mm-hmm. Well, you know you're editing, but you know. And it's hard work, but you it's know it's, why. Yeah. Like, and that, I think more and more, I think that's what makes it super frustrating for certain kinds of entrepreneurs, which is like, um, like when it's just like okay, I don't mind working super duper hard. Like I do, I think pretty crazy like quantities of work in a week most of the time if I can. But like I realize that it's all it's the difference between and I use this analogy a lot. It's the difference between renting a house and owning a house. Rent, um, and I use that more as a metaphor because literally I've started to understand different things about the difference between renting and owning a house. Owning a house is actually quite laborious in itself. But renting, you know, it is kind of sad because, like, every day I'm giving them $700, I don't get that back. That's just to you. Yeah, I can go towards the mortgage. To but, like, okay. when you're doing it with the house, it's like you're putting money in the bank account. And it's the same thing once you're able to combine your passions and your work, even if that is working a 9 to 5 and funding your passions because you know every hour I'm here, every hour I'm doing this, or if you are doing full entrepreneur stuff for me and I'm doing it all, all week and it's just like, oh, my God. Gosh, this is crazy, but I'm like, this isn't for anyone else. I get to keep every single win that I make exactly. and on the highest level because it's for my poetry or it's for, it's for my music or it's for my whatever. So I'm like, this is cool. It's like, would you get tired of like walking down the street picking up money? No, no. I don't. <laughs> you and know? it's like, if you have multiple ventures, mm-hmm. like I want to sing, I want to eventually dance. I can't dance now, but mm-hmm. you know, I can always learn and act and model. You know, I want to do all that stuff. So yeah. it's like, this is just a stepping stone. Yeah. And this is how this is what I want to do. Yeah. It's like, I understand you can, you know, I get that. Very cool. Very cool.